The Charles Darwin Foundation was awarded the UNESCO Sultan Qaboos Prize for its outstanding contributions to science and conservation in the Galapagos Islands. It's important to know that the Galapagos were the very first UNESCO World Heritage Site in 1978. It also has the world's fourth largest marine reserve and it's a biosphere reserve. It's an incredibly unique place. It warrants all the protection it can get. This was recognized many decades ago already and the Charles Darwin Foundation was created as a result of this international effort in 1959 when UNESCO, the IUCN and the government of Ecuador agreed to have a biological field station um, established in the Galapagos Islands. The key idea behind having the Charles Darwin Foundation there is to be able to base conservation action on sound scientific advice. For this reason, the Charles Darwin Foundation has a mandate for the government of Ecuador to provide independent scientific advice. There is no other organization doing it. It's a completely privately funded effort. For more than five decades, we've been operating solely as a non-profit organization and with international contributions. We have a fairly significant research operation there with more than 100 staff members. It's a huge achievement that we are still there after five decades with all of these efforts having to be privately funded. And the UNESCO Sultan Caboose Prize was in recognition of all of these successful efforts that have led and contributed so much to the conservation of this absolutely incredible place. Receiving the UNESCO Sultan Caboose Prize has brought twofold benefits to us. First of all, funding, of course, which is what we need to sustain our operation, but also, crucially, international recognition. It's a widely recognized prize, and the Charles Darwin Foundation also lives of the fact that we are so widely recognized for the work that we are doing. The more the world knows about what we are doing in Galapagos and what we are trying to achieve, the better for us as an organization. We pull together funders from different sources, and we pool their funds to achieve projects in Galapagos that would be too big for anyone to achieve. And since we received the prize, we have achieved one project successfully that has become one of the world's most outstanding conservation projects ever. It was Project Isabella. Isabella is an island in the Galapagos archipelago. It's the biggest island and it was absolutely overrun by goats. Half a million goats were eradicating the endemic and the native vegetation and outcompeting the species that Galapagos is so well known for, such as the giant tortoises. We ran a seven-year effort to free Isabella from this invasive threat. Everyone said, this cannot be done. It's impossible on this kind of scale. We tried anyway. We pulled in all the international effort and, and support that we could mobilize and we were successful. No one else has ever done anything like this before. There are other examples. We have um, also led in the last 10 years the first ever biological control program in Galapagos, again aimed at an invasive species that was endangering the endemic and native uh, fauna and flora. There are lots of examples that I could give you. There, so much has been achieved in Galapagos that is worth mentioning and that is worth telling the world about. And as I said, the UNESCO Sultan Caboose Prize helped us with funding and it also helped us with spreading the message about all the important scientific and conservation related work that the Charles Darwin Foundation is doing in the Galapagos Islands. There is no shortage of challenges for the Charles Darwin Foundation in the Galapagos Islands. However, the number one challenge that we urgently need to deal with is invasive species. The Galapagos are so unique because they are so remote. They are separated from the rest of Latin America by a thousand kilometers of open ocean and they weren't settled until very recently. However, with the onset of modern jet traveling with cargo boats, all sorts of species that don't belong into Galapagos have arrived on the islands and some of them have turned into a threat for the endemic and the native wildlife. We have been dealing with some of them successfully already, but there are still invasive species that are literally out of control and where a solution needs to be found. Blackberry is overgrowing entire stretches of the archipelago. We have an invasive fly in the Galapagos, going by the Latin name of Philonis downsi, which is endangering the land bird population. The mortality rate among some land bird nestlings is between 50 and 95% with this particular invasive fly being the chief culprit for that. We have ants arriving in the Galapagos Islands. There really is a long list of invasive species and the answer to that is science. We need to find scientific solutions because there are no conventional means to ever get rid again of these invasive species. 
The Charles Darwin Foundation has a huge success story in its history. We were the first ever organization to bring a biological control agent to the archipelago, working together very closely with the Galapagos National Park in, uh, in 2003 we brought a biological control agent to eradicate, basically eradicate, an, an invasive scale insect. We have to look at other solutions for similar problems in the Galapagos and this is going to keep us busy for many years. We are already working in some areas but we need more support and we need all the support we can get from the international community to make sure that invasive species don't destroy this unique UNESCO World Heritage Site. It is really the number one challenge we have to work on.